All right. Well, thanks, everybody. I'm going to try and uh, you know, be sort of quick. OK, now we can see everything. I'm Patrick Holmes. I'm the principal solution architect for life sciences and stuff. And I know we're probably all kind of tired of life sciences, but let me just you know, have your attention for a few more minutes, and we'll be done. Um, quick agenda, what we're going over. Uh, I wanted to give everybody some time to plan and kind of cancel their dinner plans and call their spouses and stuff, because this is really going to like, <laughs> This is going to take a long time. So I hope as everybody's settled in for the long run, uh, there's a bathroom break in two hours. <laughs> so a quick introduction to uh, uh, Isilon. Actually, uh, you know, the, the non-funny part of the agenda is simply just the, uh, that we're going to kind of take a quick look at Isilon uh, ECS, which is a new object storage platform from EMC, and take a look at the resource drivers that we built for each. and what we really use them for and why we built them. I think that's kind of more important than what we built, but we'll get to it. So a quick introduction to Isilon for those of you who aren't familiar with it already. As you can see on the pretty slide here, um, it's a big scale out NAS. It is a NAS platform for that EMC produces. And um, it's, you know, we have client installations, I think, that, that scale all the way to, we have a few clients that scale all the way to do about 30 something petabytes. For the most part, we have people maintain clusters of, you know, between five and ten petabytes. Um, this is, you know, very large for any kind of storage system, and still, a, you know, generally a, a presents a large problem for people to deal with, which I'll touch on in just a sec. But um, the point is that you can do it, and you can do it with Isilon without losing any kind of performance when you when you build such a system. It scales performance scales out as well as the capacity. Uh, it's a reliable storage system. In fact, you know, according to the slide, it's the most reliable storage system. And, uh, but I'd like everybody to just think about that. We have a nice little animation of how your data is protected on an Isilon. But the idea being that you know, it's erasure encoded and distributed over the entire cluster. It's safe. You can yank a node out. It's actually kind of a fun thing to do if you never had a chance to do it. Um, because you, know, you can see that there's absolutely no interruption of service when you do. And it gives you something to kind of play around with and get out from behind your desk. Um, the uh, Isilon platform actually provides about four different nodes now. So, you know, I, I don't know the last time everybody's seen this sort of thing, but we've got, you know, things from all the way from very high performance acceleration nodes that are simply RAM and act as part of the coherent cache that we have for a cluster, all the way down to NL series nodes, which actually have two. Uh, little platforms in between them, which is a uh, the regular NL series node, which is a 36 drive thing, and then a very large, extra large, uh, 60 drive chassis that we're calling the NL HD or HD NL, and uh, so large needs to be lifted by two or three people. Uh, has a little sticker on it that warns you not to coke machine yourself with it. It's a it's a very big thing, but we've got now people, um, uh, some large customers, especially in the life sciences using these types of nodes to build out in even larger clusters than before. And our capacity limit that was listed earlier, uh, which is really quickly at about 40 petabytes, uh, is actually not a hard limit within 1FS, which is the operating system for Isilon. Uh, it's, it's really a function of the number of things we can plug into an InfiniBand switch on the back end, which we use to maintain things. So uh, as large nodes get more dense, as things, drives get larger and everything, we can create clusters of just a ludicrous size, um, which I'm sure somebody will do for some reason someday. Um, quick note is that uh, you know, we support, H Isilon supports HDFS as a protocol. Uh, we are able to have both the name node and data node running on, the, on an Isilon cluster, serving data out from the data node. Uh, and this will just be something I'd like to keep in mind for the next slide, which is just simply that we built a resource driver for IROD that utilizes HDFS to communicate with the cluster. And the, the, the kind of advantage that gives us with this is that we can do big parallel reads out of these clusters. Uh, it gives us just great throughput numbers when we test it out. And um, you, know, you can set it up as a primary resource or as an you know, archive resource, do what you like. Um, I have a short video here of the resource driver in action, but it's, you know, it's just, it's gripping. It's, it's a real tense drama uh, about things being transferred back and forth with IRODs. I'm not going to walk everybody through it, but I understand that the slides will be posted. And for those of you who'd like to take a look, please uh, go ahead. And it just does a complete walkthrough of 
that whole process. Um, quickly, Iceland, uh, not Iceland, sorry, EMC has also produced a thing called ECS, which is the Elastic Cloud Storage. It's an object storage platform that, um, for those of you who are familiar with the other object storage platform that EMC used to have, which was Atmos, uh, this is sort of the, the spiritual successor, but the, not the actual successor, but the, sort of maintains the, the general function of Atmos, uh, but does it in an almost completely different way. It's a, it's a much, it's a very low cost platform. It's a dense platform that can actually um, scale to just, again, ludicrous sizes, be distributed all over the place. Uh, it's made to be uh, put into a number of sites, as many sites as possible. It actually has remarkable efficiency when you reach about nine sites. Uh, our efficiency is about 1.83 for a file, so it's, it's pretty neat. Um, things are being erasure encoded within each virtual data center, we call it and then distributed across the other virtual data centers and there's a kind of fancy encoding that goes and takes place for the objects as they're chunked and moved across all over the place. It also comes as a software distribution package so it doesn't have to be tied to the hardware platform. There is a complete software offering for this that EMC distributes and sells and um, we have gone uh, with a thing called we call Project Copperhead which is an open source version of this that is available for download or will actually will be available for download very shortly. They're just going through some final hoops with it. And it provides all the kind of same functionality. Um, in addition to, to offering an object storage interface for S3, Swift, uh, Atmos, uh, which is going to be slightly important in just a sec, uh, can also make buckets available and accessible via HDFS as well. The idea being, of course, that you could do analytics on your data. Um, yeah, leave that where it is. But uh, ECS as a system is a geo-replicated data protection system. Uh, replicates your data and does some encoding. Uh, if I had the, I could blind somebody with the laser pointer for just a sec. Boom. Uh, in a quick three-site setup, ECS will actually uh, take your data in here copy it over here, chunk it apart, and then XOR chunks that it receives from other f objects uh, at the third site. And so that's how it gains this sort of overall efficiency as you scale with a number of sites. There's a lot of good XOR encoding get, taking place to try and uh, you know, eliminate redundancies between files. It's effectively a form of geo-distributed dedupe. Uh, one of the, the big things that we push ECS for is to build these sort of global content repositories, we call them. But, um, you know, again, the idea being that if you're a large, very distributed multinational company or something, you have multiple sites all over the planet, um, you can place ECS at each one of these sites and then, you know, use it as a cloud object storage service. And, you know, be certain that your data is distributed, protected, available within the same namespace anywhere you access it from. And, you know, it's really kind of a neat thing. But at a cost-wise, it makes, it makes fantastic sense rather than building out massive Isilon clusters that are a single namespace in each cluster at every site to have something that's nicely distributed like ECS. So we built a resource driver for it and IROD as well. And we used the Atmos protocol to do it. And the reason why was actually because Atmos gives us a nice sort of data upload, parallel data movement and chunking uh, facility that the other protocols did not. And also we're able to use the Atmos protocol to balance in a way across the ECS nodes to allow for nice parallel, you know, multi-writer throughput uh, where we couldn't with the others. And so that's, um, that, you know, though well, that's the reason for that choice, but that's the protocol that the resource driver uses. And again, I apologize real quickly. There's a, also a video, again, it's just as, as shocking as the last one, uh, but I would encourage folks to kind of take a look at it and walk through it when they have a chance. Uh, it, it, again, goes through the setup of the resource driver and then uh, displays, you know, transferring a file back and forth and being able to see it. And I'll do all the kind of regular IRODs work that we're all so familiar with, with an ECS storage platform underneath. Okay. So why did we bother to build this? And, and this very simplistic drawing that I can hardly see because I'm very far-sighted, but um, this very simplistic drawing is 
meant to be part of a story that I'm going to tell you in a few minutes here. Um, again, we have lots of customers who build up very large Isilon installations. And the problem with that is, you know, while it's a great thing for us, ultimately it becomes kind of like a tangled drawer. Um, you know, a place where you've staffed, you know, jumped, jammed all your stuff, but can't really sort through it, can't really find all of it, and you have a lot of things that are potentially idle, but are occupying a, a little bit more expensive resource. You can't throw it away, you can't get rid of it, um, but, you know, you don't necessarily want to keep it on Isilon the way it is, uh, just given the kind of expense and the fact that you could be using that Isilon for some more active work uh, were it to be freed up with more space. So, you know, enter ECS into that picture, building this sort of global repository that I referred to earlier. What we're doing is getting together on projects with some of our customers to do this sort of bulk lifting of, here comes the laser, bulk lifting of, of a large amount of data from an Isilon into ECS via the Atmos protocol here, via HDFS on that side, so it gives us good kind of parallel throughput through, you know, a uh, uh, resource server that we're running. Uh, and we have another utility that's doing a lot of the driving and tickling the resource server as it goes by that we call ViperSync. And by doing this, we're able to drain the Isilon uh, for a lot of customers and free up a lot of much needed space for, you know, higher speed, higher throughput activities while not losing any of their data and also cataloging as it, as it goes by. And this is sort of the critical thing is that an object platform is just an object platform until you stick some kind of catalog in front of it. And um, then it becomes something far more useful. And, you know, we see that, that catalog platform being IRODs. This is supposed to be IRODs, but, you know, I just everybody had to use their imagination. IRODs in front of it um, to uh, enable access to this thing. Because otherwise, again, it's just a bunch of buckets and objects and containers and things, and it doesn't necessarily make a whole lot of sense unless you're viewing it with a nice coherent catalog. So we're able to do this, this activity fairly quickly with the resource drivers that we've written uh, instead of using just the sort of standard resource drivers that were available. Uh, while they work, uh, this actually goes a lot faster for us and we're able to, to you know, move mass quantities of data in a short amount of time. And I know the next session that we're about to get to is actually you know, sort of making our requests of IROD Santa, so um, I wanted to just get in a few of those for us <laughs> and, and lead off to the next uh, session or segue nicely into the next session, which is that, um, well, I don't have to read these to anybody, but connection-based pooling. Uh, we're not able to do multi-part writes to an Isilon because we don't have nice, we don't have these. Um, we'd like to look at, at, you know, more, better, different uh, parallel and batch job execution within IRODs and then, uh, what I'm told is, is maybe somewhat controversial, but isn't you know, terribly, there, there's a bunch of reasoning behind it. Um, general bulk operations uh, for objects and metadata within IRODs. And uh, you know, especially when we're doing mass copies of things, we'd like to make sure that we copy the metadata in one action instead of trying to you know, reassociate the metadata as we copy objects between the two, two resources. And that is it kind of finished under the wire. Thanks. We have time for questions. <coughs> no, nothing? Absolutely. Oh, oh he took pity on me. Yeah, there you go. There, that's my plant. Was, when you were talking about it and uh, intriguing with all those things which you didn't show, <laughs> the videos? Or? Yeah, the videos. Yeah. And I was thinking that why did you choose IRODs to be your catalog instead of something like VFS or NFS or anything like that? Why IRODs? Because we wanted the ability to maintain and encourage people to use a lot of user-defined metadata and attach that and associate that with their systems, right? Extended attributes within NFS or something just don't cut it. Um, so, you know, IRODs was our platform of choice. Not actually not because we had a bunch of customers using it, more that we wanted to encourage customers to stop with the uh, custom metadata catalogs that they had generated and get down to something that's more you know, uniform and was designed for that purpose.
Um, I remember there was a HDFS driver shipped with iRoads 3.3. Um, is it based on that, or was it something completely new? No, it was, it was completely new. Okay. Yeah, we uh, we use the Hadoopus library and and a few other things. So, okay. yeah. But that's yeah. we don't really know that. <laughs> Thanks. Okay. Thank you. Thank you.